Awesome. So in a few moments, we are going to be um, uh, we are going to be conducting our um, uh, evacuation, and I'm going to be talking about that in just a few moments. Thanks, Tim. No, that's fine. Um, but first, I really, really just wanted to uh, share for a few hours on what the Lord is doing. <laughs> Funny guy. Um, uh, but yeah, I just, it, it's been a few weeks and uh, Pastor Julie and, uh, and uh, Rose has been doing a, a, doing a wonderful job of bringing the, bringing the word and uh, preaching uh, here. Who's enjoyed all of that? Okay, good. Oh, that's good. Um, I think it's just been world class, to be honest, and, um, and uh, it's just been great. Uh, and thank you as a church for uh, releasing Anna and I and, uh, well, you know, Josh and Shiloh as well, uh, to uh, go and minister at a couple of churches. So if you hadn't caught up with the news, we um, are not moving to Port Lincoln, although it'd be lovely. Uh, it's a beautiful spot of the world. Um, it's, a, it's a heck of a long way. So it's seven hours past Adelaide. So if you've been to Adelaide, seven hours past Adelaide. So I'm being corrected here by my daughter. 15 hours in total, but it's seven hours past Adelaide. And so um, it's a beautiful spot. I was able to uh, FaceTime Dad as we uh, drove through Port Augusta because Pastor Bill, our founding pastor, spent uh, about eight years in dusty old hot Port Augusta. And uh, it was great to be able to show him uh, the old pub that he was too young to frequent at the time. Uh, but the old pub and the old uh, uh, pier and the port uh, there. And uh, we actually tried to find his old house as well, but uh, no, we couldn't find it. And uh, we <laughs> don't really know what we're looking for either. So, uh, um, but it was, um, that was good, but it was a good time. But uh, I'm not so much here to talk about uh, how much of a good time we had. Um, here more so to talk about what God did. And if you've got your Bibles, please open them to Joshua chapter 1. And uh, I just want to um, just continue for the next, uh, I just want to spend the next 10 minutes on uh, and, and, and just reiterate what I just really feel the Holy Spirit impressing upon my heart for you and for us completely as a church. So as a church, we have a significant and very clear direction that we're going in. There are three areas that we are working towards, three special projects, and that's uh, our primary school initiative in terms of planting a school and starting a primary school, a private uh, a Christian primary school in this building. And uh, unless the Lord has another building prepared for us or another location prepared for us. Um, uh, the second thing that we're doing is uh, the MCC CareNet in terms of its, uh, it, and that is an, an emergency food uh, relief program. And I know that that's going to uh, grow uh, and it's already growing exponentially. Um, and it hasn't even been launched. How exciting is that? Amen. Okay, and, uh, and then uh, our third thing is our building beautification, you know, because we've been in this building now for uh, a couple of decades and, uh, and it's even older than that and uh, we are looking to uh, help it be more effective in this community, uh, help people find the place better and uh, just make it nicer for you. We've had these chairs now for uh, a good long time and, uh, and I've discovered and I've found some even more comfier chairs. I know. Uh, and uh, they're not deck chairs or uh, lazy boys. How good would that be? Amen. But I'd imagine that you'd be even, you'd be making different noises while the service is going on, which would resemble sleeping. But um, um, uh, who, who could ever fall asleep in church? Amen. Everyone goes quiet. I love it. Um, but uh, in uh, following our path at the moment is that uh, at the moment we are really focusing upon 
um, taking ground. And you see, we are as a church in a unique position that we've never been before, that we are debt free and that now it really does not only feel like, but it is very clearly tangible that we can actually start to take greater ground. Was the debt holding us back? Not so much, but now it's like there's, because there's no obligation like that, now with the resources that we have, we can actually be far more effective than what we uh, have been up until this time, right? And so in terms of taking ground, it's this, it's this real feeling at the moment that, uh, that, that taking ground is enlarging, enlarging our territory. It's making our territory larger. And that's not about world domination. What it is about is, um, is seeing God receive all glory and seeing as many people come to know him as possible. And you see, it, it begins with salvation, but it ends with discipleship. And discipleship is something that not everybody loves because it's closely associated with the word discipline. Who loves discipline? Yeah, I like giving it sometimes, but I don't quite like receiving it, amen? Amen. But you see, the Bible says the Lord loves, or he goes, he, he disciplines those that he loves. So when you feel disciplined by the Lord of where you are, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're, you're adjusted or, the, you, you know, you need to take a different shape in your life, so to speak, or a different perspective on something or, or you haven't been growing and the Lord says, hey, it's, it's about time to grow enlarged a bit more or grow up a little bit more. There's this moment of there's this, and, and there's this opportunity that, that uh, the Lord longs for us to as we are discipled, we are actually beginning to take ground. We actually have a momentum in this house like that which we have not seen before for a very long time. I don't know about you, but can you sense something in the atmosphere that's different? I want to highlight it to you. How, how would I feel it and how would I describe it? There's a unity in, this, in the house like there's never been before. There's, a, there, there, there's an expectation in people's hearts and people's lives uh, uh, that there's never been before. Worship is, is going to a new level like there has never been before. Amen? And I'm wanting to talk plainly because not that just I have very little time to talk, but, but, it, but I want to talk plainly because I want to communicate cl- communicate clearly to you that the Lord is wanting to do more in this house. And he can't do more unless you're prepared to give more to him. And I'm talking about your life. Hello? That's what discipleship is, okay? And, and, and uh, you might have that feeling of, well, you know, I, I've already given him my all. My, everything is, every, all of mine is his. <laughs> and that's great. And I applaud that. And, and I know what that is. And there's many people in this, in this room that know what it is to give their all to him. But you see, there's a difference. It's not only dependent upon us giving our all. It's dependent upon our sensitivity to the direction of which the Lord is leading. So there's this moment of saying, well, Lord, I surrender everything to you. Here's a better way to describe it. In the Bible, Jesus says, I no longer call you my servants, but I call you my sons. And then he took it even further. I call you my brothers, right? And so many times people come to that moment, they come to that salvation moment of where they surrender everything to him, but they stay as a servant rather than become 
a family member. Friends, you're not servants anymore. If you've been saved any longer than five minutes, you are no longer a servant. You're no longer a slave. You no longer have a slave mentality. You are released into the full inheritance of heaven. Hello? So in Joshua chapter 1, it starts this with verse 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. How many know that Joshua already knew that? Why would the Lord say that to Joshua? What he's saying is, history is exactly that. It's gone. It's in the past. Leave it behind. He's gone. I think some of us need to look in our history and say, it's gone. And there were some good memories. There were some bad memories. Whether they were good, whether they were bad, it's in the past. Leave it there. Don't drag it up into your future all the time. We need to be able to leave our past behind. Amen? Hello? Amen? It's easy to say. It's a little bit harder to do on a daily basis. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Everybody say arise. Go over this Jordan. Everybody say arise. Go over this Jordan. You and all this people to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. We're just going to stop there. You see, as Jesus uh, comes to us, he says, I've dealt with your past. I've bought your life by giving my own life. Now leave your past behind. Arise, Isaiah 60 says, and shine for your light has come. Hello? Hello? It's very similar here. Arise, go over this Jordan and go into the promised land which the Lord has already given you. Friends, I get a sense that that's what the Lord is wanting to do with us. I get a sense that that is what the Lord is wanting to and calling for us to be, for us to arise from where we were into everything that God has for us today. Every single day has, how many know that years are made up of months? Months are made up of weeks. Weeks are made up of days. And days are made up of momentary decisions of where you either go yes to God or maybe. Which actually translated says no. Every day there is a moment in God that he longs to guide you in, help you in, grow you in, and build you in. Amen? So over the last couple of weeks, uh, Anna and I ministered in a, in a uh, um, uh, 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 light, um, Lighthouse Church in, uh, in Port Lincoln. There's a great CRC church there. And uh, Pastor Paul Kidney is the senior pastor and got a great team, incredible team. They've just merged with a, uh, another um, uh, Christian outreach uh, center church. And, uh, you know, boom, the, the, you know, the place is just bursting with kids and bursting with life. It's just absolutely fabulous. And, um, and so they've got some really great things going on there. Um, and uh, I just want to share with you some of the testimonies of what's been going on. Because I believe, and if today has one point in it, this is it. This is it. Be aware of what God is doing. Because as you are more aware, you can join in. That's it. That's it. Okay? So this is what God is doing. In Port Lincoln, there was a lady who had uh, cancer in her hip. I don't know all the details, but she was only young. She was only, uh, you know, she was only really young, actually, only in her 40s. <laughs> anyway, it is young. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, and, uh, and, and she'd had some cancer in her hip, and, uh, you know, that had re- she'd received some treatment for it. And, uh, and praise God, 
um, you know, that cancer was dealt with in, in her hip and that was uh, done and dusted. However, ever since she'd had cancer in the hip, she has had this constant pain that would shoot all the, all the way down her side and all the way down into her leg. Well, the God, well, God um, uh, gave me a word of knowledge that there was somebody who was going to receive healing. And as soon as that word of knowledge was given, that pain left her completely. She'd been struggling with that for years, years, years. I was having a conversation with somebody just a few days ago that there's a group of people in the kingdom that don't believe in healing today. I don't want to put them down, but what is wrong with you? Because God heals today. He's moving today, amen? And so what happened is that, and and, and I I want you to get a sense, leave history behind and and jump on board with what God is doing today. You hear me? And so what is God doing today? He's healing people. He's releasing great uh, words. We ministered over at a church called uh, Southeastern Christian Centre in Endeavour Hills. I was there two Thursday nights. We did some work with the uh, creative team and the worship team. And then uh, Sunday morning, they got to apply uh, all the work that we had done. And uh, I ministered, uh, I, I preached there Sunday morning and uh, Sunday night. And Anna um, did, uh, led, some, led some worship in the Sunday morning. And, uh, and, it, and it was great. It was a great impacting time. But uh, during Southeastern, there was approximately maybe, there was probably 18 to 19 words of knowledge, right, that were given. And, uh, you know, some of those words of knowledge were, were, were dust bowl moments. You know, you gave the word and you could hear crickets in the background and there was no response, which is always a great faith testing time, isn't it? You know, a little, what do you call them, tumbleweed, you know, as a... <laughs> You know, oh, that was interesting. You know, um, and uh, and and but 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 it was great. But I just want to highlight just a couple of uh, things. And I love what Josh said at, at the end of the service. He said to me, "You know, Dad, God exceeded my expectations. <laughs> I thought there was only going to be five people healed, but there were six. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, when he saw my long list, I was hoping for even anyway." Um, but uh, there was there was a gentleman, uh, yeah. There was a gentleman. There, w- there was these were. I want to talk about testimonies of what God did in response to words of knowledge. Now, if you don't know what a word of knowledge is, it's it's uh, uh, it's knowledge that God has given uh, that essentially I wouldn't know any other way. You know, if I had said. You know, oh gosh, there's um, there's somebody with a colourful scarf on. It's got uh, flowers, and she's wearing pale blue and glasses, and she's always smiling. Oh, look at that! That's you, Anne. You know, it wasn't like that. It's a word of knowledge. Is something that God had given me long before that day, and I and I um, came and released that. And so, what God has been doing is that as the word of knowledge is released, He has already moved. Okay. And so um, there was a gentleman there who had pain in his uh, pain in his his shoulder. It was sort of in his neck, down to his shoulder. And uh, you know, I was so proud of my kids. Can I be? Can I just brag a little bit? And as and and this church hasn't been used, or it's not. They're not used to somebody standing up and then the church gathering around and praying with them. And uh, and I, I'm glad that that's the norm here. Is that cool? Right, I just I, that's such a it's such a great thing, um, but uh, as um, uh, as uh, Pastor Erin Ruth, everybody remember Pastor Erin Ruth? She's uh, um, helping out down at the church there as well, and um, uh, and as Pastor Erin Ruth and Shyla and Joshua uh, prayed, the pain instantly went, instantly went. He, he'd had for days this shocking pain down his neck and it just went like that he just like he just like he was he was shocked like what this thing works are you serious you know what i mean and uh and uh he he could move his neck to full extension without any pain whatsoever and it's it was just like the look on his face was just 
It's like confusion. Don't be confused when God moves. There's like there's signs and wonders. There's signs that make you wonder and you go, wow, wow, look at that. Be in awe of him. But don't be surprised when God moves in here. Just respond in worship, amen? Another thing, there was, uh, there was a gentleman, I, I, there was a word of knowledge about a, a, a gentleman who was deaf in one ear. There's been some sort of trauma to the ear and it caused pain and there was soreness and, uh, and I had uh, released that word of knowledge and that gentleman stood up. Well, well, as he was prayed for, the ear just popped open. Are you kidding me? That's my first, that's not mine, but it's the first deaf ear that has been as a result of God using me. I'm more excited than you. Way more excited than you. And it's not, I'm not naturally an excitable person. I'm actually not. All right? I must be rather sitting around the campfire just chewing grass or whatever, right? But the point is, is his deaf ear was open. And so when the church just went, Woo-hoo, like this. He was going, oh, that's loud. He went, oh. oh. He was going like this all the time. Oh, that's loud. Oh, that's loud. Because we get so used to our ailments. We get so used to promises being robbed from us all the time. Remember, arise, shine. Go over this Jordan. Get out from where you are into the promised land. Amen. Another lady, a beautiful old dear. Petunia, I'd I'd call her, and she hadn't, for at least 15 years, she said she hadn't been able to move her arm above this sort of level like this. And again, word of knowledge was released. She was prayed for, and then she's going like this. You know, I haven't been able to do that in a very long time, she said, you know. She was like this all the time. She's, oh, oh, it does work, doesn't it? (laughs) Yeah, it's like, and it was like, what a sight to see. And you could just start to see these spot fires throughout the church going, oh, God's moving. God's doing something here. Amen. And then another one uh, was so precious that uh, I'd, I'd, um, uh, the Lord had showed me that uh, there was a lady dressed in green. And, uh, and the promise was that uh, in 12 months, she would have uh, uh, her family sitting with her in church, which generally is an indication that the Lord is working on their salvation, amen? And uh, little did we know that she'd only lost her husband a week beforehand. Wow. And that just ministered to her and touched her. And you see, Jesus cares for every single detail. Jesus cares for what uh, you are going through and what you're facing, amen? Amen. And so I just wanted to highlight this, that be aware of what God is doing. Be aware. Don't become complacent. Don't come in, go out and ho-hum. Friends, God is moving. He is doing something new. And he longs to do something new in you every Sunday. Every moment of every day. Every moment of every day. Every moment of every day. And there are some low moments, there's some high moments, but he is always speaking. He is always moving in power. Amen? So I just want to, I was just so excited to be able to share some of those things with you because uh, it's, it's, 